Hi, this is David Helms with Radius Networks. This video is an overview of ScanBeacon for OS X. ScanBeacon is an iBeacon scanner that will display for you a list of the attributes of the iBeacons that are scanning in your vicinity. Uh, just a note on the requirements, uh, ScanBeacon requires a Macintosh with uh, OS X 10.9 or above and support for Bluetooth 4.0. If you have a later version Macintosh, then it has uh, Bluetooth 4.0 support built in and older models uh, you can add an external dongle and if you want to take a visit to the Radius Networks website you'll find a list of supported uh, third-party dongles that uh, will give you what you need. So let's get started with Scan Beacon and here you can see the main window for Scan Beacon and we'll just quickly start scanning for iBeacons in our vicinity. I start scanning by pressing this button here in the bottom corner and I also stop as well and you'll notice when I'm scanning there's a little activity indicator to let you know that it is working and uh, likewise you can start and stop from this top beacon menu uh, as well and for you keyboard jockeys out there there is a uh, keyboard shortcut you just use enter to start and stop when you're in the application. So I'm showing these uh, iBeacons that are in vicinity, and these uh, beacons are uh, in various stages of configuration and, and testing. And for each beacon, what you'll see displayed is the activity indicator, uh, which is an indication of whether uh, we are currently seeing advertisements or whether this beacon is starting to age out of the list. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. And then uh, the advertising attributes, or what's being actually advertised by the beacon. Uh, and the four main attributes that are uh, sent in an iBeacon advertisement are the UUID, the major, the minor, and the power. The UUID you can think of as akin to an organizational identifier. The major you can think of as like a group identifier. And then the minor you can think of as an individual identifier within the group and within the organization. Right, so there's a hierarchical structure here in terms of the overall identifier. The fourth item that is also transmitted is the power or the measured power. And um, what that is is a calibration value that, the, that needs to be set in the beacon. And uh, when it's received by the device that is picking up the signal, it will compare this measured power value with the received signal strength indication. Uh, which is essentially the live signal strength that the device is receiving. And then based on these two values, um, it will compute um, an estimated distance and an estimated proximity range. So a distance that's less than half a meter is considered to be uh, immediate. And then a distance that is larger than half a meter is uh, generally considered to be um, either near, up to four meters, or beyond four meters, far. And those are the three the three ranges of proximity that uh, iBeacon devices uh, should categorize their proximity from the, uh, the beacon transmitter to be. Right? Um, okay, so uh, a couple things to note here. Uh, this activity indicator. So when the activity indicator is green, what the rules for that are that um, ScanBeacon has seen an advertisement from that device at least within the last five seconds. After five seconds has elapsed since, we've, since ScanBeacon has seen the last advertisement from that device, then the activity indicator will turn gray. And then if we continue to not see any additional advertisements, it will stay gray until a total of 10 seconds has elapsed. And after 10 seconds, then the, uh, the beacon is removed from the list. So you can see some of these devices are getting beyond the five second limit and turning gray for a bit, but then going back to green. Um, and the reason for that is several of these devices are battery powered beacons. And uh, many of the manufacturers of these beacons set the advertising rate to be very low in an effort to uh, conserve uh, battery as long as possible. And that's why you're seeing this flickering in and out of the active to the sort of stale state. Right? Uh, another thing to note here is uh, that 
we can, when we're looking at this, one of the most valuable things about being able to see what's happening with all your beacons is you may be able to spot a problem. In this case, I see a problem where the distance is estimated at zero meters. Now, these beacons are here right beside me, so, you know, that's, they are pretty close, as you can see in all these listings, but zero meters is kind of a red flag that something might be wrong. So if we actually take a look, let's open up the power, we can see that the measured power value, the calibrated value that this beacon is sending out is minus 128 dB. That seems to be set really, really, really low um, and is generally causing the math here to not work out correctly. So really what's happened here is that this beacon has never been calibrated and it's using a factory default which is way outside of the norm. And uh, you know the benefit of having scan beacon is you have this top-down view. We can see all the beacons so you can see if something looks a little bit strange. All right. So uh, one of the things I might want to do is uh, actually communicate this to a colleague. So let me stop here. And one really useful aspect of Scan Beacon is that I can uh, select any particular beacon, and I can copy the advertisement information from that beacon. And then I might, uh, let's just bring up something here. I can paste that in. So let's bring up uh, stickies. And I can uh, take that and see that I can get actually a full text representation of uh, the key value pairs for uh, this particular advertisement. So that's very helpful. I might send that off to a colleague and ask him to say, hey, what does he think going, is going on? Or, uh, you know, I might actually be uh, developing an app or something where I need this information. So it's very easy then to, for me just to copy, cut, and paste this into whatever project I'm working on or communicate it to my, my colleagues as well. Um, at a, a larger stage, I might actually want to have information about all of these uh, beacons. And uh, you'll notice that when I hit stop scanning, right, it actually saves the, uh, the scanning information in the state that I found it. Or, excuse me, I should probably say the state at which we hit stop scanning. So we kind of frozen our view here and exactly how things are being perceived by Scan Beacon right now. So a really, really useful thing to do is then to be able to save that information. So you can save this, let's just create a name, let's call it My Beacon. So I'm going to save it to the desktop and it'll save it to an iBeacon file, right? And if we want to open up that iBeacon file, it's just a text file. So let me. Uh, let me choose an application. We'll just use uh, text edit for this. And what you see here is that when you save this information, it actually saves it in uh, JavaScript object notation, notation or JSON. And that makes it really easy to then use this information and to import it into some other application. So if you needed to import this information into a database or you wanted to use this uh, as some information in an app you're building, the fact that this is encoded in JSON is very, very helpful. Right? Uh, one of the things you might want to do, as we talked before when we were sort of figuring out what was going with this beacon, was the idea of cutting and pasting just this information and sending it to a colleague. But what's really cool is if you actually um, took this file and you sent it to a colleague who also has Scan Beacon. You know, we can sort of play the role of now being the colleague who's got this, uh, got the Scan Beacon app, and he can actually open up the file that you send to him. And what he sees is, except for the activity indicator showing everything is kind of stale, right? Um, what he sees is actually all the advertisements and the RSSI information and the distance and proximity evaluations by Scan Beacon of what you were saying when you captured this information and stored it to this file here. So that's really awesome because you, you might find yourself actually out at a deployment site and things are you know, kind of acting a little freaky and uh, you're having a little trouble figuring out what's going on. And uh, to be able to just capture everything that you're seeing and then to send it back to your colleagues and have them view as well as what you're seeing um, can be really, really helpful. And they can help you spot problems. So maybe when you were looking at this, you didn't catch the 128 dB of why this beacon is so off. But in fact, you know, one of your colleagues might bring this up and, and see it immediately. So that's really a helpful capability. All right, so that is pretty much it for Scan Beacon, and it's a really helpful utility. I think you're going to get a lot of use out of it, and it's going to help you in terms of the iBeacon proximity solutions you're working on. We rely on it every day. It's really useful. Uh, it's cheap. It's only $9.99 uh, uh, on the Radius Networks website, and it's also available in the Apple Mac App Store. So uh, pick it up, uh, use it, 
and uh, hope you have good luck with your proximity solutions. Thanks a lot.